Tak jsme zpět, dámy a pánové, v hlavním sále. Doufám, že si celou práh Baršeho užíváte. Užíváte si ji? Jo, tak to bylo nadšení teda. Tak zkusíme to ještě jednou, jako když jsme barmani, jsme v baru. Tak bavíte se? Perfektní. Vy jste po, po víkendu všichni, že jo? Jo. jo. <laughs> tak, dámy a pánové. Připomínám, že ve 21.00 ty z vás, kdo už mají vstup na Prague Bar Show, mají i vstup na Czech Bar Awards. Tak doufám, že se tady všichni potkáme v hojném počtu. Vy, co musíte do práce, se to dozvíte na Facebooku. S největší pravděpodobností během několika minut, co se tady bude odehrávat. Jinak připomínám na infostáncích typovací soutěž, kdo uhodne, jak dopadnou dnešní Czech Bar Awards, vyhrává předplatný na rok 2013 časopisu Bar Life a získává stupenku na zítřejší seminář od Jena Bidala v Bar Life Academy od 11 do 3 hodin. Tak tady už byl dotaz ještě dřív, než jsme začali přednášku, tak poví, nahlás ještě jednou. 20, který to uhodnou, když jich bude víc. Tak, tak. To je dobrá otázka, já se zeptám režie a potom ti na to zodpovím. Ještě něco? Děkuju. Ne, já jsem v pohodě, díky. Vypadám pohublé. <laughs> Ian, they're, make, they're just making fun of me right now. Oh, no, I, I understand. Thanks. <laughs> I hope you're laughing with me, not at me. Um, mm, it's a bit of both. A bit of both. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, a man who is now in the hall of all the legends of all legends, the Rumov, Ambasador, skoro všech značek, rumový fanoušek. Uh, we got the wrong guy. Oh, yes. yeah. Dáme a pánové, přednáška historie, history of Caribbean punch od Ian Biral. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> cheers, cheers. Um, I'll just check in if the, you can hear me? Good. I'm just making sure that, because uh, my, I, I apologize, my check is very bad. So uh, I have, I know, shame on me. That's your fault, you and Alexino, not teaching me. <laughs> um, so we have two amazing uh, translators inside that little prison uh, there. So uh, if, you don't, if you don't laugh at any of my jokes, it's their fault <laughs> for not uh, translating properly. <laughs> Okay, right, so, oh, they put a clock here, wow. I have a clock, it's actually running down, because they know that I love to talk, and I love to talk about rum. And uh, if they didn't put a clock there, I would probably be here till Friday next year, uh, <laughs> talking about rum. So uh, they put a clock there, and they said, Ian, make sure it's only 45 minutes, including questions. I'm not speaking too fast, am I? Oh, good, good, good. Right, so, the history of rum. No, history of cocktail. History of rum was last year or the year before. History of uh, Caribbean rum punches. Who here has been to the Caribbean? Five people? Five? Six? Seven? This must be recession. Wow. Well, you need to go to the Caribbean. You need to welcome, embrace uh, the Caribbean lifestyle. You need to look like this guy, look, smile, look, you're smiling. That's Caribbean. It's all about enjoyment. It's all about fun. It's all about Liedbak and Yemen. <laughs> That's what the Caribbean's about. And when you think of cocktails or drinks like rum punches, it's like the Caribbean in a glass. It's that emotion. It's that you want to smile. You want to, uh, I, always, I always say to people, especially bartenders, I say, think of a, a vodka martini. <laughs> now think of a rum punch. <laughs> yeah, man. See, rum punches 
are fun. It's a fun drink. This is the reason why rum punches have influenced so many cocktails uh, in today's bars, especially if you see a lot of tiki bars. Most of the tiki cocktails have been influenced by rum cocktails. So just got a short presentation. Um, and what it is, it's, it's a, a little tiny uh, journey into the history of some of the most popular uh, rum cocktails, uh, sorry, rum punch cocktails. Hopefully you have some of them in your bar. If you don't, hopefully you might take some of the recipes and put it into your bar. If not, just make it at home for your friends, for your boyfriends, girlfriends, mums. Make it for your enemy as well, because rum is for everybody. Rum punch and rum cocktails are for everybody. Cool? Right, so let's make sure this works now. Oh, right, okay, right, so the uh, rum punch. Everyone knows that's the, uh, does that work? Woo! I love gadgets, I feel like James Bond. <laughs> right, so, um, Mai Tai, everyone knows the Mai Tai. Mai Tai is one of the most popular cocktails in the world. It is also, for me, the quintessential epitome of tiki drinks. And the Mai Tai is a punch. It's a punch style of cocktail, as you know, using the sweet and the sour and the strong and the weak, um, but in different blends. And uh, so it's also, when the Mai Tai was created, it was created for a couple. It was created for two people that came into Trader Vic's bar and they shared the cocktail because rum punches are mm. a communal drink. If I had a big enough bowl, I'd make a rum punch for everyone. Now I might be able to try that one. Mm. A bowl over there. I'd make a rum punch for everyone to share because that is what rum punches are about. It's about sharing, having fun, unless someone's got a cold or, um, or syphilis on their lips. <laughs> and you don't want to share. But, but rum punches are the first communal cocktail. The first English drink of status. Now, there's a beautiful rum punch bowl there. And if anyone saw Alex Zeno's presentation this morning, uh, this afternoon, you would have seen his beautiful rum punch bowl. I think it might be the same one. Um, and that's what, back in the 1700s in England, when you made a rum punch, you shared that, you had that on your table, inside your house, you threw everything inside there, juices, wine, brandy, all different types of alcohol. And um, you also grated a little bit of nutmeg. And just to prove and show your wealth, you'd actually hang the nutmeg grater around your neck. And what that showed friends was that you had a little bit of money. It's like, um, it'd be like if this was solid gold and I wore it as a chain, that would show I'm bling. I could be like a rapper. <laughs> That's what they did in the 1700s. This showed that you had a little bit of wealth because why would you need a nutmeg grater if you didn't have nutmegs for your punches. Nutmegs were very, very expensive, so it showed you had money. So the punch was a way of showing status and wealth. As I said before, influencer of many, many tiki cocktails, uh, the zombie punch, uh, Mai Tai, of course, uh, pff, fog cutter, you name it, they've had an influence through Caribbean cocktails. And it is the most popular style of cocktail that you will have in the Caribbean, bar none. Bigger than the daiquiri, bigger than the mosquito, um, the mojito, sorry. Um, <laughs> bigger than the dark and stormy, the Jamaican mule. Caribbean rum punches are always, and if you go to the Caribbean, sorry, when you go to the Caribbean, every single person thinks they make the best rum punch. My grandmother says to me, Ian, Ian, when can you make a rum punch like me? That's how my grandmother speaks. I'm not, did you translate that okay, yeah? Good, good. <laughs> and I'm like, but, but mum, I call her mum, mum, I can make a rum punch. I make rum punches in my bar. In your bar, that's not a rum punch. You can't make rum punch. And when are you gonna get a proper job? She still thinks I don't have a proper job because I'm working behind my bar. So I'm a, I have to be a doctor or a lawyer or a mechanic or, no, not a lawyer, uh, or a mechanic, um, so. So yes, it's uh, the most popular style of cocktail in the Caribbean. Great, ca ooh, what's that? Oh, Caribbean rum punch, yeah, we love rum punches. That's one of my favorite rum punches there. That's another one of my favorite rum punches. That was actually a Puerto Rican rum punch. Puerto Rican, uh, That's another one of my favorites. 
This warns me, make sure your rum punches are not too strong. This happens every time you blink and you pour a little bit too extra rum inside there. Be careful. So, but the question is for today, oh, I need to ask, thank you Holmes, uh, where did the punch originate from? Anyone know? Cuba. Cuba. Wrong. Good guess though. Good guess, good guess. Anyone guess? Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. No, wrong. <laughs> Anyone know? India. From India. You're close. You're close. There's a country really close to India. It was, the original punch was a Slivovich punch <laughs> in, in 1569. 50 mils of sliver fish, 25 mils of lime, 10 mils of plum syrup, 50 mils of water, and a dash of plum bits. No, I'm bullshitting, I'm bullshitting, I'm, I'm bullshitting. Really. Forget that last slide, that was bullshitting. Right, no, yes. So, yes, India was a, yeah, good guess, good guess. You've heard this before, haven't you? Okay. Um, yes, so how did the punch get to the Caribbean? Well, in the, as I said, in the 17th century, the English were drinking punches, influence, from India. They were putting things like wine inside there and brandy. Um, eventually, they put rum in there, but rum only came in after 1655 when the English captured Jamaica from the Spanish. And that's when they started using rum in their rum punches. So the actual most popular rum punch at the time, in fact, that, that little punch bowl there, you can see all these English people doing what they do best, smoking drugs, <laughs> smoking more drugs, he looks like he's had a bit too much. <laughs> Unless he's asking for him to do something else while he's down there. I don't know, while you're down there, while you're down there, mate. Um, so, um, so this was the, uh, the actual wassail type of punch, which was made with wines. But then, as I said, the rums then came into play in the 1650s, 1655, and they started using rum in the modern rum punch. But how did the punch come to England? It's from India, sir. Right. Punches came from India when employees of the East India Company came across in the early 1600s, and they saw the locals making, um, well, like, like this guy here, making a little tiny punch of his own. And what they were using were ingredients, five ingredients, because the word punch, as most of us know, is a Hindu word, a Hindustani word for five. It's actually punch. Yeah, five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, five ingredients. We had spirit, sugar, lemon juice, water, and some spice or tea. Those, that was the original punch that was brought from India over to... Oh, so was that a question there? Or you just put your hands up. Um, brought over to England. We're actually going to be, for the lucky people in the expensive seats, sorry guys in the cheap seats at the back, um, there is some punches going around. This is um, the actual... Uh, is this the Bayesian punch? Martin, Bayesian punch? Planter's punch? This is the planter's punch coming out. Oh, and India, this was an Indian punch. <laughs> I know most of you can't see the punch glass. It's, uh, where is it? Oh, it's there, there it is. So that's the Indian punch that influenced, well, it influenced me in making my cocktails. Right, so the planter's punch. Planter's punch because the planters in the Caribbean at a time, the rich English uh, were, they had their sugar plantains, they were making their own rums, they were making sugar, and with that leftover molasses, they were making their rum. Now, oh, sorry, what was that? Oh, I thought it was thing. Um, so, they then started making a punch, and they called it the planter's punch because of the planters. And a lot of the slaves remember to, to teach the slaves how to actually make this drink, they, they thought of a little poem. And it's one of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, four of weak, and five of spice to make it nice. And in Jamaican, one of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, four of weak, and five of spice to make it nice. <laughs> and the spice would have been a bit of nutmeg, um, or a bit of nutmeg, or a little bit of uh, Angostura bitters, which came uh, after 1824, after the bitters was invented in Venezuela, Angostura, Venezuela, then moved to Trinidad, and then went around the whole of the Caribbean. So the original planter's punch is what these lucky people were sipping on now. Is okay? Not bad? Yeah, you feel like you're in the Caribbean? Yeah, man. Yeah? You're, you want to go to the Caribbean? It's not your girlfriend, is it? Oh, good. 
I thought he was going to slap me. Right, so yes, so the original Planter's Punch, 1600s. Um, today's Planter's Punch, what you'll see in a lot of bars, um, especially in America, a lot of tiki bars as well, that would be what you'd get now of the Planter's Punch. You also see this in the Caribbean as well. This is the, what we call the modern Planter's Punch, dark rum, orange juice, lime, grenadine. Sometimes people put a bit of pineapple inside there, but essentially it's fruit juices, citrus, and then the syrup. And then you float a little bit of rum on top. One of the most popular brands is Myers. In fact, Myers, old Jamaica rum, used to put planters rum on their label. Keeping up with me, translators? Yeah, good, that's good. I will be making some of these drinks in a second. Right, but if we look at the planters punch ingredients, that has evolved um, to what we call today. In fact, this is an old cocktail from the 1700s, but it's evolved today into the Barbadian punch or the Bayesian punch, which is very similar to the planter's punch. The main difference is they add the Angostura bitters in and they add the nutmeg as well. And it's simple. Rum, water, lime, sugar. A bit like most other cocktails in the Caribbean. The daiquiri, the mosquito, the caipirinha. They all have the lime, sugar, and rum. Uh, there's just different ways of actually creating the product. And then a bit of spice and nutmeg. So if you ha ever have someone from Barbados that comes into your bar and they say, make me a rum punch, 99% of the times, this is the style of punch um, that they like. And I think that's coming out. You got the Bayesian punch coming out, sir? Uh, it's coming. So it's on Caribbean time. That means it'll come tomorrow. <laughs> or in Caribbean, we say soon come. Is there, a, is there a Czech equivalent to a, I'll do it later, like a saying? Mañana. Mañana. Oh, that's the same in Spanish. It's just too urgent, mañana. All right, oh, we might start it. You going to start at the back? Ah, oh, well done, because don't let these greedy people in the front get all the drinks. Right, so, oh, let's make a couple. So, um, as I said, very, very simple, two simple drinks. I like to, when I'm making my Bayesian punch, I do like to use on my planter's punch. I like to use a good, strong rum for my planter's punch. So I'm going to use, yeah, man, Ray Nephew. Let me just pour a little bit on the floor. Just to get rid of the ghosts and the bad vibes and all the poltergeists as well. So um, I use a strong rum for my, my, planter's punch, uh, my planter's punch. And then for my Bayesian uh, punch, I'll use a gold rum. Now, unfortunately, we didn't have any Barbados rum, but we were kindly offered a bottle of rum, Atlantico, all the way from Dominican Republic. Uh, one of my, in fact, amazing rum. Some people feel that maybe you shouldn't use the reserver inside a cocktail, but hey, we're blinging it up. Why not use more expensive ingredients inside the cocktail? It's me. Oh. Why not use more expensive ingredients inside the cocktail? Um, again, these cocktails, as if you remember from last year, when my grandmother, who taught me a lot of the drinks, she said, Ian, you don't measure, you feel. You remember that one, yeah? You feel it. So I'm, I'm doing a Caribbean feel. <laughs> and then we do the planter's punch. Always put a little tush inside there. Again, both simple, lime, some fresh lime juice. <laughs> Sugar. Nowadays as well, if you go to the Caribbean, a lot of Caribbeans, instead of using simple syrup or sugar syrup, they'll use grenadine or a strawberry syrup. So you'll see a lot of that in the cocktails. Bit of sweetness inside there. That's the... Essentially, that would be... Our punch, top that up with some water, because we have plenty of water. Another ingredient they might use in the Caribbean, if you want to jazz it up, use coconut water as well. So it's going to top it up with a little bit of coconut water. Well, for our Asian punch, water. Uh, Martin, my dear fellow, is it possible to get some um, bitters, please? That's my best English accent. Um, <laughs> bit of a nutmeg. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, give Martin a big hand. He's the hardest man, hardest worker inside, second hardest worker inside here. 
Just a bit of nutmeg on top. Dash of bitters. Three dashes, and that would be our Bayesian punch and our planter's punch. And proper strength as well. None of that weak stuff. We don't do weak here. It's not prohibition anymore. Right, so <laughs> that'd be our Bayesian and our planters. Okay, right. Still on track. If you also go to Barbados, which is probably the home of rum, that's where the word rum came from, from rum bullion, a condensed word meaning an uproar, a turmoil, lots of noise. This probably means you guys haven't drunk enough rum today because you're too quiet. So um, the word rum came from Barbados, so naturally rum punch and the rum punches would come from there. So one of the more popular cocktails you have is the corn and oil. And technically, it doesn't have all the ingredients of a punch, but what they do now is they add a little lime as garnish. So you then have the four elements for this particular drink. Um, this, is a, this is the punch that you'll get as an aperitif at a lot of events in Barbados. So you go to a big hotel, you go to one of the parties, they'll have a little corner and all, and then you go into one of the big strong rum punches. So again, the corner and all, a very, very simple drink. Oops, save that one there. Um, we use a, a Bayesian rum. Using the Atlantico again for this one. Again, we're feeling it. And then we use half the amount of... Martin, my dear fellow, is it possible to get the Falernum, please? See, they steal all my stuff. Don't you hate it when you work in a bar and the bartenders use something, they don't put it straight back in the... Anyone who works in bars where the bartenders don't put it, your fellow bartenders don't put it straight back and you can't find it? Marty, where's my Falernum? No Falernum? No, I didn't. <laughs> he, came out to get, he came out to get the applaud. He didn't come out to be my Falernum. <laughs> oh, so we have some homemade Falernum. Thank you. Where's this made from? Which, which bar? Black Angels. Ooh, Black Angels. Anyone from Black Angels here? Yeah, I'm suing you guys because I woke up with a terrible headache this morning after drinking in your place. Right. <laughs> so using half the measure of Falernum, um, the original JD Falernum from Barbados would be 11% alcohol, a mixture of cloves, lime, a bit of almond, some citrus notes in there, and sugar. And that, would be, that would essentially would be Falernum, but there's lots of different styles now that everyone's playing around with. And uh, I know this one's a very good one. Crushed ice. Bit more rum. We like raw rum. Get out a little, just a little swizzle. And we just use a little bit. Oh, any lime wedges over there? Just use a. They have nothing for me. I'm gonna put a little touch of lime on top. Just a touch. Top that up with a little bit more ice. And that would be our corn and oil, one of the most popular cocktails you'll get in Barbados now um, as a, a welcome punch. Okay. Caribbean punch. Don't forget the bitters. <laughs> right. Uh, the tip punch. Anyone been to Martinique? Of the seven people that, been, that went to the Caribbean, did anyone go to Martinique? No? Anyone French here? Oh, damn. That means I can't give the French grief. Um, <laughs> hello! Oh, uh, oh, um, how do you say? Uh, merci? No, no. Uh, oh, how do you say hello in French? Bonsoir! Bonsoir! That's goodbye, no? Oh, bonsoir, bonsoir. Bonsoir! Bonsoir! Anyway, tip punch. Tip punch um, is, basically means petty punch, small punch. And again, it works on the same basis. The rum, the lime, the sugar, and the water, the weak, would be the ice if you have ice in there, because an original tip punch shouldn't have any ice, yeah? I know that in Europe we like to put ice in all of our drinks, but an original tip punch shouldn't have any ice as such. It should be just the agricol, sugar syrup, and the lime. If you use a, an age rum, it would be called a tip punch vieux, age tip punch. Now, when you serve this particular cocktail, this particular drink, there's a ceremony you do. When you're in the Caribbean, they give you the bottle, they'll give you the lime, 
and they give you the sugar and a glass, and you make it yourself at the table. Now, I tried this in London, in a bar, in my bar, and the customer gave back the bottle after an hour, and there was only one shot gone. But he was very drunk. I'm like, because what you do, you pay for what you use. So you give them a bottle with a mark, they pay for what they use. And I'm like, that shot must be very strong. It's like 50% alcohol. Then I realized when I tasted the rum, he watered it down. He put water back in the bottle. This is the reason why the ceremony does not work in England. I don't know if it would work here in Czech Republic. But uh, what I do now is I give a double measure of rum, half a measure of sugar, some lime, and the glass. And they just make it themselves at the table. That way, if they complain it's too sweet, it's their fault. If they complain it's too sour, it's their fault. Yeah, so that's the tip onch. They say in Martinique you should drink tip onch about eight times a day. One in the morning when you wake up, tip onch. One on the way to work, tip onch. One when you get to work at about 11 o'clock, tip onch. One about one o'clock in the afternoon after you finish, tip onch. And then when you finish work about five, tip onch. And then you're on the way home and you say, let me go and have drinks with my friends. Tip on, tip on, tip on, tip on. And then you're staggering home and you get home and you see the wife, you're like, tip on. <laughs> and, <laughs> so <laughs> that is the tradition in uh, Martinique. So uh, that's why there are lots of kids in Martinique and lots of happy wives. <laughs> right, so speaking of uh, some more Caribbean punches, one of my favorite punches is the punch de creme in Trinidad. Oh, is that the punch de creme? No, the punch de creme. Okay, bring that one out, bring that one out, bring that one out. Because you're too pretty for me to argue with. Right, so <laughs> the punch de creme, which is not what you're trying now, you're trying the Guinness punch, but that comes after. So, the Poncha Creme is a cocktail that is normally served at Christmas time. So, if you ever go to Trinidad and go to Carnival, especially, well, Carnival is normally in February, but if you ever go at Christmas, this is the drink you're going to be drinking. Um, it's, a, it's basically an eggnog with rum. Um, and because they drink a lot of it at Christmas, there are a lot of babies born in September in uh, Trinidad. I don't know why, maybe it's nine months different between Christmas and September, I, I'm not sure. But um, my grandmother gave me her recipe, because my grandmother never gives me recipes. So she gave me her recipe for a, 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 a ponche creme. And I was trying to work out what it was, because she likes to draw pictures. So this is what I deciphered. Because when I say to my grandmother, 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 what's the recipe for that drink? A little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little touch of that, and that's it. And feel it. So I never get, I never get a recipe. So this is what I've worked out it is. We've got the eggs, evaporated milk, condensed milk, lime juice, rum, bitters, nutmeg. Easy. I hope. I'm going to try one of these now. I wanted to make a drink for everyone, so I think this one... Um, make for, oh, I need a punch bowl. Uh, ah. Right so, right, so we have um, a punch bowl for everyone. So first of all, by the way, if I slip and break my neck, uh, please say hi to uh, my family. A couple of eggs, whole eggs inside there. How many of us are there? One, two, three, four, too much. So any questions so far? Anyone have a favorite punch in their bar? Like the uh, Black Angels punch, mm, Bar and Books punch. The, uh, what's that place you took me to the other day? Golden what? Golden Cream, is that what you took me to? Golden Tree. Is that a bar? I was, I, I don't remember, I was sleeping. Oh, is that for me? Oh, okay, but that's gonna go out there. Oh, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Let me finish this first. You can stand there, look, oh, no, 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 don't leave there, no, you stay there. No, no, you stay there, stay there. You can pick up lemons though. Right, so. <laughs> How many eggs is that so far? Four. You was not watching. Five. You're right, four. No, five. Uh, one more egg. 
OK, right. So we add our eggs. Um, we add our condensed milk. Bit of milk. We love a bit of milk. Perfect. Anyone use condensed milk in cocktails? One of my favorite cocktails is a batida using the cachaça, condensed milk, and some fresh fruit from Brazil. So we've got some condensed milk there. We also have uh, some evaporated milk. Oh, I feel like Christmas already. Right, some sugar, because we love a sweet drink. And I'm making it for everybody. You okay, Dears? You okay? Good. What's your name? Barbara. 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 Okay, and your name is? Helena. Teresa. Teresa. Ah, okay. You ever been to Jamaica? You've been to Jamaica? Unfortunately. Would you like to go to Jamaica? Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, stop it. Um, right, so oh, a bit more sugar. There we go. A bit more sugar. Right, what else do we need in there? Some bitters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Some nutmeg. Ah, oh, smells like Christmas. Unfortunately, it's not Christmas in uh, Prague, because in Christmas in Prague, it's very cold and snowy. No snow in the Caribbean, only in our drinks. Okay, what else do we need inside there? We add, oh, the most important thing, rum. Ah, right, which rum should we use? Ah, oh, there we go. Now, when you go to the Caribbean, especially in Trinidad, they drink a lot of strong rum. So uh, they actually have a rum there that they use in their cocktails called, uh, uh, it's actually called Punchin, and it's 75% alcohol by volume. So I thought I'd get something, I thought that was too strong for um, my guest here, so I went, a little, I went weaker, I went with a 70% alcohol rum. Is that okay? Is, is that fine for you guys, yeah? I, I, I hear the Austrian guys are saying yes. What, in Czech Republic, nobody drinks? Nobody wants 70, okay. Well, maybe I only put a little bit in there for you. So, um, which part uh, of Prague are you from? <laughs> from where? Prague 6, Prague 6. Ooh, that's a dangerous part, no? Yeah? Ooh, I heard about Prague 6. Dangerous girls. I heard the lights go out when the car doors close. Oh, ooh. Just put a little tiny bit more inside there. <sighs> a little bit more. A little bit more? There's no more to put. <laughs> okay, and then we uh, give that a stir or a whisk. This is where I pretend to be a chef. Give it a good mix up. Normally, if this was a TV program, as opposed to a live program, we'd have one of these made up for you. But uh, Martin said to me, Ian, make it live, so it'd be less work for me to do. Because uh, Bar Life does not pay me enough. <laughs> oh, thank you. Is that for me? Oh, give me. Ah, uh, another one of my, uh, one of my, uh, Assistance. Associates. Associate. Ooh, it's giving me a ladle. Oh, thank you. What's your name, sorry? I'm Edward. Edward. Edward makes the best pumpkin soup inside the place. Give me a big hand. So, give this a stir. As I get it's all over. Ooh, it's nice and thick. Put some ice inside there. You have to remember, this is a Christmas drink. So it's, uh, as I said, like eggnog, like Bailey's. Just making sure it's right. Needs a bit more nutmeg. Let's have a taste of that. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. That's better. And one more thing it does, because remember with the punch, remember we have the one of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, four of weak. If you notice, it doesn't have any sour in there at the moment. So just a touch of either lime juice, some lime juice, or 
you can use the rinds of the lime. It all depends on who's making it and how they make it. Now, this should be enough for the guys in the back at the cheap seats. There we go. Now, this will be our Christmas punch. Oh, let me just have a little taste, one more taste. Yeah, man. Eggnog. Right, so uh, I'll give this to the ladies at the back. Martin will finish this off for me, and he's going to bring this out for you. I, I thought I was going to tell you, but I enjoy you guys being out here with me. Thank you for looking so pretty. <laughs> right, so the punch of cream, um, which is, I said, a very Christmassy drink. You're going to get some of that. It's going to give it another stir because we're running out of time. Um, but one of my other favorite drinks is the Guinness punch. Did you guys try the Guinness punch? Anyone try the Guinness punch? The first, the punch that just came out, the creamy one. No one? The last drink that came out. No one tried it? <laughs> you sure? Okay, what was the last drink you tried? The Guinness punch, yes! Because they brought the wrong one out, that's the reason why. So, it was a Guinness punch. And again, the Guinness punch is a, a simple drink. This is one of the first punches, in fact, the first punch I ever drank. And uh, Martin, is it, can I get some, Martin, can I get some sweet milk, please? Condensed milk, sweet milk. I've, I've run out. So, Guinness, if you come to my bar as well, we also uh, serve this in the bar. We actually call it the strong back. The reason why we call it the strong back, because it puts strength in your back when you're ding, 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 ding. So, it's like Jamaica's natural Viagra. Very, very important, guys. This is true. This puts lead in your pencil. <laughs> Touch of rum. Some milk. Using that, our favorite uh, sweet condensed milk again. I can see everyone rushing out to go and buy some of this now for their bar. Ah, you're a star. They're not paying you enough, you know. There we go. If you have trouble it coming out, taking too long, just do this. That's what we do in the Caribbean. Uh, we do a little bit of nutmeg. And then we give that a stir. As I said, this was the first punch I ever drank. We normally have this in the Caribbean, especially in Jamaica, on a Sunday, after the Sunday dinner. And uh, this is the reason why a lot of Jamaicans are big and healthy and strong and fast. <laughs> because of this punch. Woohoo! Yeah, man. It tastes terrible. It tastes disgusting. You don't want to try this. You don't want to try this one. Oh, yeah, you do want to try that. I'll say that one for later. Um, but some of you guys did try the Guinness punch because they brought it out earlier. We'll drink some of this later once my time is run out. But um, as I said, the Guinness punch is one of the most popular drinks inside the Caribbean. About the 1930s is when it basically came out into the market, and that's when Guinness was being promoted and pushed within Jamaica, and they started using it. It's also based on an old classic cocktail, an old classic drink, the flip. So where they use beer, they use milk, they use flour, they use pumpkins, everything they could put inside the drink, and then stuck a hot poker in there, made it flip. This is where this drink evolved from. And uh, finally, uh, one of my favorite rum punches is the reggae rum punch, created by this Chinese man named me. Yeah, his name was John Me, or Low Me, or Blow Me. No, no, it wasn't Blow Me. Um, no. <laughs> so, yes, I, I was asked by Ray and Effie to create a cocktail for them way back in, before you were born, 1994. Um, way back in the days. And it was just based on a rum punch, planter's punch. Um, after a few of these, you sing like Bob Marley. That's true. Could this be love? After two or three. 
Um, but it's a fruity, pungent drink that you'll sip, you'll savor, and as I said, makes you think of the Caribbean. So I got my Jamaican shaker, because uh, in Jamaica, you know, we like everything big. <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's true. <laughs> um, so, touch of rum. That's just for one person. That's for me. Ah, let's make for two people. A little short person. Um, so we have the rum inside there, which is a strong. We've got the weak. Sorry, the sour, which is the lime juice. A touch of lime inside there. This is quite a sweet drink, but once you've shaken it up with the fruit juices and the ice, it does soften up, and it's, it, it helps mask some of the strength of the Ray Nephew, as you know, with 63% alcohol waiting to slap you in the mouth. So, one drink, two drinks, little tush for three drinks. There you go. Nice and sweet. Make your teeth fall out. Then we're going to add the orange juice and pineapple juice. Let's add a bit of the pineapple juice. It's tropical. I'm going to add a bit more of that because I don't want to kill anybody here. That's a strong drink. Add some orange juice. Should have some reggae rum punches coming out. And then loads of ice. Good thing I've got big hands. Anyone play basketball here? No? No one plays basketball? Oh no, I forgot they're translating. Oh, okay, no one plays basketball here. And then we give a, a good Jamaican chick. Speak to the beat. I hear the music. Boom, 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 boom. Reggae man. That's the reggae. That's a reggae vibe. It's putting some of the energy into the drink. You know when they say that if you don't put the energy inside a drink, it'll never taste as good as when you're in a good mood. If you make a drink you're in a good mood, they say the drink always tastes better. If you're in a bad mood, your girlfriend pissed you off, or your boyfriend pissed you off, and you come to work, you make a cocktail, that energy goes into the drink. It's true. It's true. Trust me. No one trusts me. <laughs> Have a taste of that. Ah, needs a bit more rum inside there. <laughs> We're making it for friends, aren't we? It's all about friends. And it's all about Barbara over there. Where's Barbara? Barbara, hello. Oh, she's not listening. Anyway, when you do go to the Caribbean, this is how the bartenders pour. They just pour and pour. They're like, are you going to stop? They're like, no, man. Everything cool. Let me see if some for the next customer. That doesn't work. <laughs> Did you say finish it? Who said that? <laughs> ah, I see Australians inside the house. Get a bit of sweetness inside there. Ah, there we go. Give it a good stir. That's ready for me. That's how I like my drinks. <laughs> oh, sorry, you guys wanted some as well. Oh, sorry. Well, you know how it is. In the Caribbean, we like everything big. You know, you have a nice big drink. So that's, that would be the reggae rum punch, as I said, created in 94. In um, and it was my interpretation of the planter's punch uh, that I wanted to help promote and push the Ray Nephew. And the good thing about that rum, you saw how much Ray Nephew went in there. You don't really taste the Ray Nephew but you feel it later. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, there's the ingredients. 50 mils of Ray Nephew, 50 mils of orange juice, pineapple juice, 25 of grenadine, and a dash of lime, and shake all the ingredients of a Jamaican shake. And if you can't do the Jamaican shake, you can do the, the Prague pose. Or the, uh, I was going to say a hungry one, but I won't. <laughs> right, so, conclusion. In conclusion. Oh, yes, please because they're waiting for the rum punch. It's some reggae rum punch. In conclusion, so the rum punches did not originate um, in Czech with uh, Tuzemski. It was Slivovich. 
it was Slivovich. The first English style punch was first recorded in 1632. The first Caribbean rum punch was circa 1655, at about the same time as rum was found by the English. And uh, most strong Caribbean rum cocktails, I can testify to this, will make, um, make your back stronger in uh, sexual intercourse. That's true. Look, he's smiling. He knows, don't you? You know. He's like, he's like drinking. He's like, yeah, when I get home to my girlfriend, I'm going to have a strong buck. Yeah, man. I'm gonna, yeah, I can't see. He's, he's not, he, he knows. He knows. Uh, and most importantly, rum must, sorry, the rum cocktails must have rum in it. Why would it not be a rum punch if you didn't have rum cocktails inside there? We have some volume, sir? Volume? See, I asked if there was any volume, and they said no. They said yes. All right, do you want to pause? Pause. Very nice cocktail with my... Oh, there it is. There we go. More volume, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is uh, Alex. I work at the uh, Artisan Bar, which is the best bar in the world. Uh, I am the best bartender. And uh, today I'm going to be making a very nice cocktail with my uh, favorite rum, uh, Rum de Jeremy. It's fantastic. So what are we going to do? We're going to start with, uh, with some Becherovka from Czech Republic. My family has a very good uh, business in Czech Republic. Recently we got a bit of trouble, but it's very nice Christmas spice. Falernum from uh, Ian Burroughs family. Very nice, lovely. We need uh, some citrus to balance it out. Oh my God, when I have it, fantastic here. So the citrus, yeah. Uh, touch more of the Falernum. And uh, we're gonna throw it to aerate it first because then I would like to uh, shake it and after that we're going to swizzle it uh, to enhance the nose uh, of, the, uh, of the cask. Fantastic. So we are ready here to throw it. Yeah, so it's all there. Now we're going to shake it. Very important to get the dilution, the temperature right. I brought, uh, I brought my own ice. So we have that there. Fantastic. Now I'm gonna stay into the glass and because it's a swizzle, obviously it needs to be served with a crushed ice. We're gonna garnish it uh, with uh, patient bitters, which is fantastic, very nice. Perfect. And this is the garnish. Here we go, this is my uh, Ronde Jeremy cocktail for the Ronde Jeremy cocktail competition in 2012. <laughs> Should have some bite. Well, I don't know if you have some bite. Excuse me. <laughs> well, it's very tasty. For a virgin, there's no rum. Where's the Ron to Jeremy rum? There's no Ron to Jeremy rum in here. What is this? <laughs> Can I start again? So, make sure. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> So in conclusion, when you are making your punch, don't make like Alexina did, please put the rum inside your Caribbean rum punch. Thanks again, my name is Ian Burrell. You guys have been amazing, as usual, and uh, I will see you later for a drink. Thank you. Q&A time. Huh? Q&A. Yes. Tak dámy oh, a pánové, nastává chvíle, kdy vy máte možnost se Iena zeptat na cokoliv, co máte na srdci. Máme prostor pro dvě, tři otázky, jako obvykle. Máte někdo otázku? 
Tam je otázka. Vydržte, vydržte. A se vám dá mikrofon. Uh, sorry. Uh, if you invite us for a drink, tell me where we can find you. Um, my, oh, he's saying in Czech. A pán se ptá, kdybychom, měli být, kdybychom chtěli jít za INM na drink, tak kde ho najdeme? Um, my bar is in, in London, Camden, called Cotton's. Uh, so it's a bar and a restaurant. And I have about 300 rums inside there. So Camden Town, London. Thank you. Tak další otázku, dámy a pánové. Hey, you know. Mává někdo? Nevidím. Tamhle vidím otázku, pán. Oh, didn't see you hiding there. Hello. Oh, yeah, give me the microphone. A jen, uh, můžu mluvit česky, jo? Uh, dáš nám ochutnat z toho shakeru, z toho velkého? Uh, the question is, uh, if you will give us a taste from the shaker. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you have one after. Yeah, after. Yeah, you have one. For you. Yeah. Tak potom si můžeš přijít. And bring your girlfriends as well. Is that your girlfriend? Looks like a man to me. A holku si sněl přijíst. Oh. Ne, no, to je <laughs> Jižní Čechy, no, dobře. A ještě nějaký další otázky, dámy a pánové? Oh. Ještě tady otázka. Question over here? Yes, sir. Oh, it's been in my car. Come on, run! Sprint, sprint! Um, I would like to ask you, how is um, Guinness related with Caribbean drink? How is the Guinness beer yeah. with the mm. Irish beer? Mm. How is it related with Caribbean drink? How is it related? Yeah. Um, good question. Uh, yeah. Otázka je, jak je uh, Guinness, irský pivo, spojeno vlastně s Karibikem? Jaká je tam ta spojitost? Well, the Caribbean is, especially Jamaica, they've always had stout sold there because of the Irish immigrants. Yeah? So, when Guinness saw this, they decided to set up a brewery in Jamaica. So they actually brew Guinness in Jamaica. It's actually called Export. It's about 7.5% alcohol. So that's a connection between Jamaican drinks or Caribbean drinks and stout. Very, very popular. The other most important thing is Guinness used to advertise that Guinness made you strong, it made you more virile, and Jamaicans and Caribbeans love that. <laughs> so that's why they put in all their drinks. Yeah, That's the reason why, connection. Tak ještě poslední otázku bychom tam stihli dát, dámy a pánové. One last question. Ooh. No questions at, uh, at two o'clock in the morning when I'm partying. It's a bit answer now. Everyone's gonna, everyone's gonna ask you something at oh, that time. <laughs> Not ask me a question? No? Okay. Tak jo, dámy a pánové, oh, well, Ian Mirel. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.